Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we have a story of a man who found out his fiancé has been cheating on him with a younger guy. And this is what he finally did. Here's the full story with final update. Yesterday morning a man 5 years younger than me, 30, appeared in my driveway screaming. I walked to see my fiancé outside and this man claiming to be shocked that the woman he's been dating for 3 years has a house, a dog and a boyfriend. He left after saying his piece while I was outside with the two of them. My girlfriend and I have been together for 10 years. We've had ups and downs and got engaged while I was away in grad school. When I came back to live with her I noticed something was different. We just weren't incredibly close and didn't feel the intimacy we had previously, but promised each other to work on it. Things got better and eventually we decided instead of having a wedding, we wanted to use the money we saved up and that our family would be gifting us to buy a house. After a year into living in the house and her fighting with me for years about letting her be independent and letting her have nights out with her friends, I find out she's had a relationship with this other guy. For years, I don't know what to do. Our lives are so intertwined and we have this amazing house in both of our names and an amazing dog. She hasn't denied anything and has seemingly been telling me the truth about this guy, that he filled a void in her life that I wasn't filling that she did it because she wanted to feel wanted again and something about her feeling young again. I think our situation has been a lot on her and she wanted a chance to feel like she was in college again or something I don't know. Not really fair to me. She said she wants us to work but I just can't get the image of her and this lie out of my head. I love our life and our families and our house, but I don't know if I can ever love her again. Help me please. Please get yourself into some IC. You may have severe codependency issues. Do not fall for the sunk cost fallacy. The woman you think you love does not exist. It was her mask. You are still young, are not married and don't have any kids. Your girlfriend basically led a double life for three years and when exposed blamed you for her betraying you. This is indicative of who she really is. Save yourself. Sell the house and move on. It hurts and will be difficult but eventually you will find someone who has the emotionally and intellectually maturity as well as the integrity to have a loving long-term relationship. She's lied to you for years. She's blamed you for her affair, yet still wanted to play house and eventually marry you. There is nothing to fix. She obviously is not apologetic by making excuses and blame shifting. When something is completely destroyed and not fixable you get rid of it. Please do yourself a favor and find someone worthy of your love. She lied, deceived and totally disrespected you. For three effing years. So sorry buddy, ONS maybe. But to sleep with him, tell him she loves him then come home and do, say the same things for you. For three years. It will be hard but only you can decide what you need to do. Personally for me it would be a big no. I decided to spend the weekend apart from her after finding out the news. I confided in some friends who gave me some solid advice but basically told me that I shouldn't make any rash decisions one way or the other. To sit and feel these emotions but not try to let them rule your life and to expect effing answers. I know my girlfriend treated me like absolute crap, but I do not hate her or want her dead. I know this sounds weird and maybe indicative of losing that feeling of love for her, but I don't want her to die on a curb. I just want honesty and for us to be honest with ourselves. I want the courage to make the honest decision for myself, first and foremost. We have talked a lot in the last few days between each other and have thought about her justifying doing what she did. It cannot be justified, but it did let us know what is wrong between us. I am seeing a separate independent therapist and a couple therapists with her this week. But this week, I took off of work and told her I am heading to the beach. I decided we needed time apart to settle our emotions and get clear-headed. She has been really hammering me with the guilt of the things that I have done to her over the years and although there's some truth to that, I think she needs to look in the effing mirror. Also a thing that I noticed is she's more defensive about her actions and scared of losing the house to me and being labeled the one who cheated versus how I feel as the person who had their life turned upside down. And that's telling. So this week I am leaving her with all of the responsibilities that I usually do. The things she doesn't come close to understanding the things I do around our house. I know you all have your pitchforks out and want me to dump her bad and make it a big evil thing. But that's just not how I am. I would rather make a sound decision and once I do that feel good about that decision. And if it's to leave her the way I will make her feel as bad as I did will be because I have become a better person because of her awful actions. And she will be miserable seeing that person who she could have been with. But I am not quite at that stage yet, still quite shell-shocked. A lot has transpired in the past month or so and therapy has helped me immensely. My ex-fiancé and I agreed that she needed to move into a new apartment and we needed to be completely broken up. 
We have both allegedly been seeing separate therapists and have also agreed to not speak for at least a month. That time is for me. I have found that the constant contact and rehashing of things and arguments with her hasn't helped at all and in fact puts me back into an emotional mess, so I am avoiding that until I feel better about it. If I ever do. This time period since I last made an update has thrown me in the most pain that I have ever experienced in my life. But I believe there can be some good out of it. I have been exercising. I have been on a few dates and have started to become more aware of who I am and what I want need in life and in someone else. When you are in a long-term relationship like this that changes very slowly and were brought up with a family history of infidelity, you start to normalize this. And that has been my biggest problem. I have no idea of what a normal relationship is and could be. So talking to people who have no history of stuff like this and who have no clue about our situation has helped because it makes me realize how messed up our lives were and how messed up what she did was. I also recently contacted the guy who apparently had no idea about this either. He hasn't reached back to me yet. I wanted some clarity on a few things and also to see if she had seen him since D-Day. My ex has been trying to get back together with me but I have absolutely no intentions of ever doing that. What will transpire in the next several months is that I will buy her out from our house and slowly move on. I will probably give one last final update to this once I sign the papers and move on with my life. But I wanted to thank all of the people who supported me on here or in DMs. It's really not something you can prepare yourself for or can really grasp what it's like until you go through it and I am still newly going through it. I have constant nightmares and feel very low energy, depressed at times. But it is possible to feel good and even excited about the future and I can see glimpses of that now. I want to tell anyone else who goes through something like this that you need to do whatever you can in your power to step away from the situation. Try to get a broader view of your life and remove immediate contact from the person who had the affair because they are toxic and will make you feel awful. Feel the pain but try to understand that this isn't your problem. Force yourself to do things like go out with friends or go on vacation and preoccupy your mind. A book that really helped me that was recommended by my therapist is Broken Open by Elizabeth Lesser. I have followed your saga from the first sketchy activities she was pulling by changing your profile picture and blocking people on Facebook. In lieu of what transpired in your first post in this sequence, a couple months ago, it all suddenly makes sense. She was hiding your relationship with her to the outside world, in case her other guy came snooping. SMH. We are not dealing with a criminal mastermind here. I know, you're expecting this to be another post validating your decisions in emotional and macho jargon. Nah, it's sad. I know this has been very harmful to your psyche. I really question her mental stability, and certainly her judgment, if she thought she could keep these plates spinning in midair forever. Did you ever ask her what her long-term goal was, or even why she was settling down with you? That's settling down, not settling for. Once you get a mortgage together, that is settling down for certain. Did she ever address what a colossal blunder it was to keep a steady guy on the side, and making emotional commitments with, while at the same time actually buying a house with you? I mean, that's staggering. I know, I know, all of this is largely meaningless to contemplate at this point, but the motivations of your ex continue to baffle me. This is a story that really stands out, the power of the human mind to convince itself that everything will sort itself out if they just ignore possible consequences for a while longer is truly impressive. I wish you all the best. Needless to say, I agree with your conclusions and your outcome. Three years of adultery is an awfully big ask when it comes to forgiveness. Three years. Wow. I know it will hurt for a while but I'm getting a sense of cautious optimism as an undercurrent. You have your life ahead of you, make the most of it. For you. I did ask her what her long-term goal was. She said she wanted to make it work with me and that's why she never broke up with me. But also why she never said hey let's get married. She said that she wanted us to work but that whenever we tried to fix things, it eventually went back to the way it was and she was weak and selfish and went to this other guy. Mostly because she truly didn't believe that I loved her and that she really did compartmentalize this entire separate life. She has recently said she is extremely remorseful and of course I am not taking much of her word at the moment because she has constantly been trying to get me to flip her into being the victim which is a thing for me because I am overly empathetic of her. None of this really matters anymore. Her actions were too callous and hurtful for me to possibly overlook. And I truly think she got in a place where she had her own secret life. No one in her family knew and even her closest friends I do not believe had any idea it was this drastic. OP added more info. I think she really compartmentalized an entire separate life. To be honest she in her head convinced herself that I didn't love her and that we were sort of this different relationship that was just there while a fantasy one existed elsewhere. 
I mean she consciously made this decision but I feel she sort of was delusional because she didn't tell anyone close to her about it. No one in her family knew and maybe her two close friends knew but not the full extent. That's sort of also why I reached out to the guy because it seems very insane to me. She has said that she wanted us to stay together and that's why she never broke up with me but at the same time she was very unhappy and lived a selfish second life. She said she was going to end it with this guy but went back to him every time we fought and things didn't change between us. Those reasons mean nothing to me anymore, I used to try to understand and justify things but it's really harmful to do that to yourself as a victim. Also in the back of my mind, she has very little to stand on so I think part of her explaining things to me and reaching out to me is to make me flip her into the victim. I am usually overly empathetic and her entire family has basically sided with me, so her last shot is for me to rescue her. Not happening, but I'm also just very much interested in taking care of myself because I have been in so much pain and don't want to keep living so unhappily over someone who doesn't really deserve my sadness. About a year and a half ago I realized what I thought was a worst case scenario, that my fiancé had a long affair with someone else and she had lied to me during the course of us buying a house together. Since my last post, I had gotten her off of the mortgage and I refinanced my house. We still split time owning a dog together but I plan on talking to her about me taking sole ownership of the dog since I have the ability to work from home and have a yard. That is the only time we engage with each other. We don't even exchange pleasantries when we do. It's just a handoff every two weeks. But I think I am ready for that to be done and for us to never see each other again. I have had some major ups and downs since this has happened but I want to offer a word of support to anyone going through this. It will seem like there is no end in sight and you cannot fathom living normally after something like this but it does get better. Talking to people and therapy really does help but stuff like this just hurts sometimes and there's nothing you can do but trust in time to do its thing. I had journaled for months, talked to a therapist weekly, friends, family and turned over everything in my life and in my mind to try to reason myself into understanding what happened and find a way to force myself to feel better about it but there is only so much you can do. The best medicine after doing some due diligence in exploring yourself in therapy is getting back out there and living your life. Some things that didn't work for me was trying to become a serial dater and enjoy my new freedom. After having multiple friends with benefits who I would meet up with each about once a week or two, my bank account was suffering and my health from drinking was too. I decided to take a break and focus on myself and when I was ready, I decided to try dating again but for a girlfriend. I have been together with someone for the last six months or so who is truly a good person deep down. We have something that I never knew existed with my past fiancé, and I am truly excited and open in a way that I now know I wasn't in my past relationship. I feel I am at peace with our relationship ending, but that doesn't mean I don't hurt every now and then. I don't know if it will ever not hurt to remember, but I can tell you that you can get over it in a way and find someone who is better for you. After rereading your previous posts I remembered reading them. It sounds like you're moving on and hopefully doing well. Getting sole ownership of the dog so you can go completely and see with her seems to be in your best interest. Best of luck to you in achieving this end. I am doing well, I wasn't for a long time though. I am hopeful to get everything resolved but it's not the end of the world if we keep splitting the dog. You can't force dating. It takes time before you make yourself vulnerable again. However, you can make new friends and adopt new hobbies. Do you think she is trying to keep you in her life by hanging on to the dog? What do you think her end game was? Do you think she planned to marry you and then get half the house in a divorce? I think her end game was that she didn't love me or herself and felt trapped in the life that she signed up for. I don't think she was trying to get half the house in a divorce because she always retreated when I brought up marriage and once I found a way to pay some of the money she put into the house she gave it up. I think she built a secretive and fun, yet extremely dark way of coping with her issues instead of working on us and her family. It's like when someone gets frustrated with something instead of talking about it they do X, Y, Z. And this was that for her. I don't think she is trying to keep me in her life by hanging on to the dog. I think she has a relationship with the dog outside of me. I could not get in touch with my ex's AP, even though I reached out and my ex's sister did during the whole ordeal. I'm almost certain they stopped seeing each other after this blew up, although it doesn't really matter. Her family was as shocked as I was and honestly don't know if they'll ever repair their relationship to back to what it was. It opened a lot of problems and resentment they had been hiding or covering, and my ex went into full accusation and defense mode because she can't admit when she's wrong. OP, happy to hear you're doing well. Life can throw some unexpected challenges our way. You should be proud of how gracefully you've managed through it all. It couldn't have been easy. Good luck and stay strong. 
Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like our videos, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.